Hello, and welcome to yet another episode of Three Black Pratt Brads. My name is Greg Claythorne. I'm here with my good friend, Mark Skinner. Say hello, Mark. Hello. And my friend, Kenny Nelson. Say hello, Ken. Good. We, good. Uh, we, well, like a goo, 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 goo. We, uh, we are the Three Black Pratt Brads. We're not only the only ones. I'm sure there are more, but. We graduated around the same time from Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, New York, fine art photography program. Uh, we have a love of photography, and we've been shooting for decades. Um, uh, we're still shooting, and uh, we get together uh, now, semi-regularly, to uh, record um, our thoughts on photography, where it is, where it's been, where it's going. And uh, right now, we're here again. Uh, now, this one, I'm lucky enough to be um, the topic the topic guy. And I, I just came up with, um, you know, I was thinking, you know, instead of being outside in, I wanted to be kind of inside out. And I wanted to uh, talk about, you know, what photography has taught, well, me. But then I wanted to throw it out on the table to see what you guys think about you know, what photography has taught you. Now, um, uh, just to start, I'm going to start it off because it's going to be kind of, I just, I, I don't know, I just get this feeling to get something off my chest. But um, photography has been, uh, uh, bittersweet, man. I mean, photography can be one of the most beautiful art forms, but it can be one of the most uh, painful art forms because it's uh, you know if you make it tack sharp and or slightly blurred you know it, it, it's real basically you, you, you can't you know take a brush stroke or maybe in photoshop but it's not something you create it is what it is but it depends on how you capture it that makes it um you know the uh, the visual impact. Uh, this this first image, uh, I I had a challenge with the um the houseless situation. It, it just punches you right in the face and in the gut, and it's like you know it's sad, it's scary, it's in in a I won't say a twisted kind of sense, but in a different kind of perspective. You know, people are like, nope. I'm not paying three thousand dollars for a shack. I'd rather live on the street. That, that's kind of a power person, powerful personal statement. Um, and then the other side of that, you can go to the next one. Then, um, you know, photography can be blue skies, rainbows, and butterflies. The only thing that's kind of missing is a unicorn. You know, but um, I got to thinking, you know, what a beautiful wine we're on it. I should see. I, oof, I love Weimaraners. This guy has a Weimaraner. Anyway, um, sorry. <laughs> uh, what photography? Photography has taught me that um, on the downside, it could give you an illusion. You could, you could, you could dump that picture. Um, on the downside, it can uh, give you uh, a false sense of participation in a way. You know, you can capture something and show it, but are you emotionally attached to it? Maybe, maybe not. Um, uh, it's, it can give you a sense of um, false participation. That, that's kind of what, what I feel when I look at the, uh, the houseless people. And instead of just shaking my head, turning away, it's like, well, isn't that something maybe I can get involved and help out in, you know, instead of just taking a picture? Um, or does it satisfy something in me that allows me to, you know, continue living with myself just by taking the picture? It's like, okay, I did my part. Um, when I when I first thought of this thing, what is photography talking? It, it, it is, and partially the, uh, the, uh, training at Pratt, the fine art part of it. It's uh, given me a sense of seeing differently, which 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 is kind of cool, 
because when you when you walk with your uh, I'll say non-artistic friends, but people that aren't you know kind of artsy or whatever, and you'll see something like a combination of color and light and motion and stuff, and you're just like you know your eyes are bugging out. And you're like, oh my god, look at that, look at that. Where's my camera? Where's my camera? Um, and they're like, what? Oh, it's blue. You know, you know what I mean? So, so it's a different experience for me when I when I think about what photography has done for me. Um, it, it's given me a sense, a deeper sense of just being in a way, you know, because, okay, all right, if you go back, uh, like, I know how to see with my hands now, in a way, you know? And that's something that I do. I'll, I'll get up in the morning, and instead of uh, turning the lights on to find the toothbrush or the shower across the beach poles, I just go and take a shower in the dark. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that, you know. And uh, I don't think if I if I had to use my hands to load a roll of film, pop open the canister, load a roll of film in the total darkness that I would be doing, you know, odd things like that now. Um, photography has taught me how to be, in, in some ways, you know, more more empathetic because I, I see things more. I'm more uh, aware, not necessarily aware. Um, I don't, I feel the word is escaping it. But I, I, I'm, I guess you could just say aware because I'm noticing stuff. So, um, and that has also gotten me to step into situations where, you know, I'm not just a photographer. This needs human interaction. I'm going to do something. And uh, if that is one big thing that I've learned from photography to, you know, step up, be, step from behind the camera and join in life, um, that is one of the biggest, best things that photography has taught me. So are you saying that uh, photography's helped teach you uh, a little bit about activism? A little bit about activism, a little bit about um, engagement, you know? Um, like, uh, I know looking at Ken's pictures and going out um, into the streets or, or had, a, had a friend whose daughter was running for city council or, she was out there organizing, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter events, you know, and then to see all of the the scope of people that, that came out, it wasn't just a black thing; it was a, it was a human thing, you know. And uh, to, to see how all these uh, people of different uh, ethnicities are coming out to support this one cause that that was so, uh, you know. That was so good. I mean, the pictures were powerful, no doubt. Ken's pictures, you know, amazing, you know. But just to see people, you know, getting out and getting involved in, in, uh, I mean, not necessarily an activist, an activist vein, but yeah, maybe yes, you know, because it's like, you know, okay, this is this is a little bit, this is dramatic, this is photojournalism, but you know what? I'm human too. I'm having feelings about this, and I could be next. So <laughs> maybe, maybe yeah, a little bit of activism. But um, is there something else I wanted to say about that being able to see, see in the darkness? It's, it's just like superpowers, kind of, you know, not being afraid of the dark, you know, <laughs> um, being able to trust that you can use your other senses to to figure things out. And, um, yes, your toes that you stub uh, have a powerful sense of touch. Ooh, don't tell me about that. I do, I do do that, and I walk into corners and things in the dark, and I wish I had turned the lights on. But <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, empathy. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff, and and that, that those are my uh, highlights. Not not to belabor it or run on and on. That's that's all I got. Go ahead, Mark. Are you up next? No, that's what Kenny. has photography? Kenny's neck? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Nelson, what has photography taught you, my friend? Okay, I've got something to show you to put that into perspective. Hey, and you I, have to pay I'm a not, dollar? 
I've not done this yet, so hopefully you'll be able to hear the presentation. Ooh, look at you. Just a little something you put together. Things that photography has taught me throughout my photography career and lifetime in total. This is in no particular order. Many times things are not what they appear to be to you. Entertain the notion that what you're seeing is a product of your imagination. Always confirm what you're seeing. Don't assume. The human condition is my human condition changes, morphs over time. As humanity evolves, so, so does the human condition. Autopilot is standard protocol for humanity. As you reach for a glass of water, you don't need to actually see, you just do. That's the autopilot I'm referring to. Life is 99% randomness. Outside of one's own thought processes and actions, you don't have to control the fact. For instance, who or what you'll see or what will happen when you're outdoors. Photography has made my joy of people watching an art form. Photography has taught me to use shape statistically. Photo science makes photography possible. Optics, chemistry, math, chemical sciences, photographs. Science supports creativity. Things cannot, things change, be adaptable. Your outcome may be described, but your process may be revision due to unforeseen roadblocks. Now is the time you have. You can't go back to get it. Think quickly about what you're seeing in the future. Decide right there, really, to have a perfect future. Nicely That's done, it. Mr. Nelson. Nicely done. Thank you. So, right, it's not it's not all encompassing, but it's as I was um, sort of meditating over the past couple of days, just thinking about it. I thought I because I think I could express it in a in a video presentation better than I could say it, and so I, I was I did that earlier today, and I was like, yeah, this is the, the gist of is what I wanted to get across. It's it's really taught me how to see, how to interpret. And taught me ways, taught me ideas and ways that I prefer to be when I compare it to how I could be if I were to follow a prescribed set of sta standards or rules. So, so but that's really just. 99% randomness seems a bit much, but okay. I, I tell you, it when when I think about because it's just almost everything we do, we have no control. We have it's no fluid. It, it it really is. It's like it's Greg fluid. has no control of what's going to happen behind him, left him, right him, right. You sort of Greg, Mark, are more in a static place, but things can still happen beyond your control, and those are the randomness I was talking about. The only thing you have in you is your thought processes, and your actions, your ability to move, and you can't control whether you're not going to get stub your toe stub when you go out. It's just going to happen. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> That's basically it. But, but science, science follows a certain set of rules. I mean, photography wouldn't be able to be done if the chemicals didn't act exactly a certain way or light didn't act a certain way or if uh, the optics didn't operate in a certain way right but so, that's that's connecting it to science not contact connecting it to humanity that's the okay. difference the connection between science is science is science is solid the human part of the science is the part that is rocky and shaky okay okay that's I'm what i that. yep very nicely done i mean i was i wrote i wrote a 
a kind of a poem to, you know, um, what photography has taught me. And it, it, it kind of, I kind of liked it. Maybe I'll read it next time. But uh, it's um, similar to that. And it's also, you know, the, the relationship between reality and abstraction. You know, I mean, sight is abstract. It's just the way your mind is interpreting this three-dimensional world into you know, etc. It, it is dimensional for sure, but um, you know, it's like when you take a photograph, it instantly jumps to the abstract, but it's with a realistic um, quality to it. Okay, uh, not to belabor. Go ahead, Mark. What do you got? What is photography taught to you, my friend? Uh, now, there are a lot of technical things that have to be taught, but there are three main things that are taught. That is. Number one, there are secrets within every instance. Every instance of our existence there are secrets within. You take a photograph, you capture an instance. Are you secret. saying secrets? Hmm? Are you saying secrets? Secrets, yes. There are secrets okay, within ahead. every photograph. There's information, even if it's a commercial photograph, you don't know sometimes whether it's... Uh, uh, mashed potatoes or real ice cream. I mean, it could be that simple. Or you don't know what the person is really feeling, but there are secrets within every photo. Within, and, and therefore, there are secrets within every instant. That's what I'm talking about. Secrets within every instant. The second thing that I would say is that the moving image has made us, this is very important, there's a difference. It's made us less imaginative yet more creative and what i mean by that is that our our collective swipe file that we all use for visual reference has become exponentially great. you know we 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 catalog in our on our heads images we've seen from movies television youtube uh uh tweets anything that that we see all become part of our thinking we ingest this material but we're not really being as imaginative as other people were in past uh, time, olden days, like, you know, 100 years ago or 50 years ago, because they quite often had to create the imagery that we tend to just sort of reference and piece together. That's the second thing that we're talking about. And then the third thing that I think is really significant, because we lament about this a lot, what Lemon meant about this off camera. But I finally came to the conclusion that it hasn't been another Gordon Parks because America doesn't want that. That sounds more incendiary than it is. We already have one African-American is doing the job. Once he the education, and prior to that, he had to go to the Midwest, but he was distracted from that, allowed to work with the government. Years, they work life magazine, able to do things for Vogue. But the only reason why someone of that stature doesn't exist today is because we didn't, well, I should say America, the United States did not feel that another African American should be lifted to that level of success in that way with that level of notoriety. There are a lot of great photographers, a lot of commercial photographers who are making good money. There are a lot of journalists who try every now and then you hear the pop up. But I reason why I specifically say the United States is because in on this planet, yeah, I don't know about the other planet, this planet, you are not famous unless you are famous in the United States. Unless what? You're not famous unless you're famous in the United States. I'm not saying that other countries don't have fake, uh, celebrities within their own borders, but you really made it if you're someone who is famous in the United States beyond the country you uh, were born in. So that, that's the third thing. Now, you know, one other thing is kind of a minor thing, but it's kind of like a, uh, you know, it's a technical thing. You know, you, you really, you know, when they say garbage in, garbage out, you have to get quality imaging in to satisfy the visual requirements. And I hate to say it, but sometimes that just translates into gear. I mean, sometimes sometimes you have to really make sure you get the proper gear. You get the proper gear. You just go around it. That's just about having the right gear. So, 
But the main things I wanted to point out were the secret within every instant that we are much more creative because we put together a lot of things and we come up with some magic, but we're not as imaginative as people had been in the mid 20th century. That's, that's just how I feel about it. And I'm pretty sure it's true. And then I don't agree with that, but go ahead. And the last thing, once again, is that there was only one Gordon Parks because powers that be did not feel that anyone else should, at least up to now, should have been uh, risen to his level of accomplishment within the photographic business. That's it. I I don't, I I hear you. Thank you for your input. I don't agree with the uh, creativity part. This is your second uh, argument. Because people are coming up with some really, really creative stuff. Now, visually, I mean, stills and, uh, you know, uh, uh, film or clips or animation, people are really coming up with some stuff. And uh, um, the last point, I mean, no, there's no Gordon Parks, but I'm sure there's a cluster of... uh, shooters out there, black shooters out there that are doing stuff and may not be, you know, getting the notoriety. That's exactly my point. They're not being afforded the opportunity to have the kind of notoriety. Even Gordon Gordon Parks back in his day wasn't like a, you know, a celebrity. Well, by the time uh, by the time he was able to uh, have a couple of movies he was certainly known within the publishing field, and I just watched oh, the documentary. Sure. I just watched a documentary about him on uh, was it HBO Max, and yeah, you know, they, talked, they even showed they even showed while he was at Life Magazine a sort of a television profile of Gordon Parks. He's a photographer at uh, Life Magazine. He's the man with the job, and you know. And I thought about it. And I said, this is something that that was filmed at the time he was doing the job, so mm-hmm. there was an effort. To make sure he was known, even with the Farm Security Administration, there was no reason for them to grab one African American. Certainly in the 1930s, there was no reason to grab an African American uh, and, and let that individual do the work. There was just right. no reason, other than Troy Stryker or the Farm Security Administration, uh, or Roosevelt, or whoever it was at the time, felt that it was important to do that. Hey, Mark, okay, so granted, is, granted. Is, it, is it that you're saying that there are some machinations that are keeping anyone else from reaching that pinnacle? I think that in many instances, uh, there have been situations where, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, when the pilots returned from World War II, they were African-American pilots, but they were <laughs> not allowed to transition into uh, commercial aviation. Okay. I know... At one point, my mother had even gone to the Midwest in order to help protest, to, you know, to get the black pilots the opportunity to uh, to fly commercial, even if it was just freight flights or mail flights. So, yes, there have been situations where certain industries have said, you know, we have one or two and that's all we want or nobody. I, I, I think... Uh, okay. You know, I mean, that's just the history of how things are. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not saying that that doesn't still go on today, but I got two words for you. Tyler Perry. I mean, he's got his own film studio. Yes, Rival and that's big, and that's film. Boy, so no, no, that's film. I'm talking specifically about photography. You asked what did photography teach you, and what I'm saying is that okay. photography has taught me that there's no other Gordon Parks because within the Racist. 150 or 160 or 200 years of photography that has existed, whatever that number is, they have, the, the, the powers that be have not that felt the need racist. to do that. I mean, when, when, when Parks worked for Vogue, it was because Diana Vreeland said, I want to bring this guy in. And have him okay, so racism is still real. Oh, well, no, I still it, have it's a, not. Have a button. Can you see my button? Right, but I didn't say it's still, still real. What I said was, and I agree with you, it is, what I'm saying is, to get to his stature, you mentioned Tyler Perry. We've had innumerable celebrities and sports people who, uh, sports athletes who have achieved far beyond what a, a lowly photographer would have done. 
but I'm saying very specifically because of graphic conditions, he was the only one because they didn't want another. And I'm not saying they didn't want anyone to work. I'm just saying they didn't want someone to be at that point. And you, you, you can pile together whatever they you want to be. But the truth is, I'm not saying in a punitive way. I'm saying there was no one uh, raising anyone to that level, giving them all the opportunities they needed to become another Gordon Parks. Well, Gordon didn't just, you know, wait around for people to pick him. He was working. He was doing his social work, too. When I mean social work, I mean social networking so that he could be in a position to get those positions. Right, but I, so, I bet if George talked to a lot of currently working pros of every ethnicity and every gender, I think you would find that they are doing their marketing and they are doing their socializing and they are doing whatever they need to do. But they're not getting the notoriety of, say, an Ansel Adams or a, you know, or a Eugene Smith or a Dorothea Lange, you know. My point is, is that you're going back way back. Go ahead. Right, but my point is, is that there's there's only one, because there was no need. No one felt there was a need for another. That that it's very significant to say that there's. Okay. Not saying that they kept everyone out. I'm saying there was never a need to raise anyone to that level. Okay, I I I'll just agree to disagree. But um, anything else, Mr. Nelson? Anything else, Ms. Skinner? No, we're good. I'm good. We're good? Yeah. All yeah. right. So, there it is. Maybe we'll have a part two of what photography is taught to. Yes, racism is alive and well. True, no doubt. Um, so is the human spirit, which can overcome damn near anything. Uh, well, that's going to make it for this episode of Three Black Frat Grads. You know, those tres. I'm Greg Claygore. That's Mark Skinner. That's Kim Nelson. And we will see you next time. Hey, don't forget to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that bell so you're notified when another episode comes out. We're doing this. If you have a topic you'd like us to discuss or if you'd like to come on the show, <laughs> just let us know and we'll, you know, we'll do what we can. All right. I'm Greg Clayton. Peace.